Hi, this is Link, and I like to make a video about finding a godly wife. Um, it's a real blessing to have a godly wife. Uh, he that finds a wife finds uh, re receives favor from the Lord. It's a wives are a wonderful thing. It's good to have a wife if you're a Christian man. And w what criteria should you use to determine uh, who to marry? Well, the Bible has a lot of information for the godly young man who's seeking to please the Lord. Uh, to, to have for criteria for a wife. Now, I've made some other videos about whether I, you have to hear God to get married, and I, I believe it's a good thing if you hear God to get married, but the, the Bible says if you marry, you have not sinned. I believe we have some freedom there. And I, in my own situation, um, you know, I looked at my wife's characteristics and things, but I also was, you know, receiving some direction from the Lord, and there were a lot of little hints the Lord gave in addition to that. And um, after I made up my mind to go buy a wedding ring, a prophetic confirmation that sort of indicated that was went along with the idea that we'd get married. And there were a lot of, lot of things like that. So I, I can see both sides of the coin, uh, but I'd like to talk about the characteristics that you should look for in a godly woman that you want to marry. I'm looking at my notes over here on the side and I'm not looking at you guys. So uh, 2 Corinthians 6 contains a big characteristic. Do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. This doesn't specifically mention marriage, but what closer yoke do you have some, with someone uh, that you can possibly have in life than bes besides marriage? This is a close yoke that we that we have. We're closely joined, and if you're if you marry an unbeliever, um, you'll face some difficulties. Now, if if you are married to an unbeliever, that doesn't mean you're without hope in the world or in, in the kingdom of God. Uh, second, uh, First Peter chapter three uh, tells women to. Um, submit to their husbands and be holy and live a godly lifestyle so that they might win their husbands through their lifestyle. And 1 Corinthians chapter 7 says to the man and to the woman, how do you know that you might win your wife or win your husband? Um, you might save your wife or save your husband through your, through your, your uh, being married to them. So um, what, one, another thing to consider is when, when you want to choose someone to marry is you don't want to be in a forbidden marriage. Okay, you don't marry your sister. You don't marry your mom. This is addressing to guys looking for wives here. You don't marry your mom. Uh, you, you don't marry another guy. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to do that. And you don't marry um, yeah, someone that has been with your father in an intimate way and or your brother. Uh, unless your brother's dead, then you could marry his widow if you're if you would like to do that, that was an Old Testament custom. But if your brother's alive, you're not. Yeah, you know, don't don't marry anybody that your brother slept with, your dad's or slept slept with, or anything like that. Just don't do that. Um, a divorced woman. This is something a bit controversial. I'll just read a verse and make some commentary here. Matthew five thirty one through thirty two. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Now let's say there's a divorced woman, and she has left her husband, or she's separated, or whatever, and you start dating her, and she could reconcile with her husband, but you get in the way, and you marry her, and she got a divorce, no biblical grounds, um, is that right? You know, if you have a certificate from the government that says it's your divorce, that doesn't mean it was right in the sight of God, for you to get a divorce or that um, it's okay for somebody to come along and marry you. In a lot of cases, uh, what you should do is reconcile. And the stereotype of divorce is, it seems like, you know, the, the middle, middle-aged man who goes through a midlife crisis and uh, has a hot secretary, young secretary, his wife's looking kind of middle-aged, so he dumps his wife and goes with the young hot secretary and marries her. And that's sort of the stereotype, and that happens. But um, I read that about uh, the most divorces are filed by women, and uh, two-thirds to 70% of no-fault divorces are filed by women, according to some 10-year-old research. And so really, I suppose the more predominant stereotype would be the woman who just decides she's not happy with her marriage anymore, that she's not getting what she wants out of life. She just doesn't think her husband is cutting the mustard, and she just files for a divorce. It's real cold, won't talk about it. That happens too, and I don't know if that's more common than the, the man running off after his secretary or not, but um, yeah, you, you don't want to marry somebody like that. And then what happens when she gets bored with you? And what happens when if you marry somebody that's theologically questionable to marry them? And then later you think, oh, I made a wrong decision. And then you're faced with this dilemma. Oh, what is the right thing to do now that I've married her? 
what should I do? You know, what, what is pleasing to God? And then people will give you different advice one way or the other on how, what's the right thing to do from that point. But I can tell you, if you don't get involved, the right thing to do is not, not get involved in, in breaking up someone's reconciliation, even if they have a, a divorce paper. So, um, yeah, another thing is about divorce. We live in this culture where people think it's okay if you're not happy just in, with your marriage just to get a divorce. Or if somebody is verbally abusing you, that you should divorce them. Or if somebody is doing this, you should divorce them or doing that. Or um, that if a man, here's, here's one I read recently, that if a man looks at porn, then it's okay to get a divorce from him. Well, you know, Jesus said, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in, already in your heart. But it doesn't say that it's okay to divorce over that. Um, certainly you should get some, you should repent, but, uh, to, uh, divorce over that, uh, you know, the man and the woman that marry are one in body, and this is a sin in the heart against the Lord. So anyway, that's, I, I think people are a bit too free to give people permission, divorce, divorce, divorce these days. Um, yeah, so we, we need to be careful to marry somebody that doesn't think like that. Um, a lot of people will have pastors that are just real loose about divorce and they'll say, you know, when I divorce my second wife, blah, 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 blah. So you, you want to have somebody who has a real biblical, serious commitment to marriage and doesn't want to let it go because it's going to be tough when you're married. Whenever you're married, there's difficulties, there's in-laws, there's um, unemployment, or there's all these things that come to, at you in life and you can get under stress. You know, there's hormones uh, from women have all kinds of hormones, you know, pregnancy hormones, there's uh, hormones for every month, you know, and they, there are all kinds of things and it, the emotions will fly around at times in your life. And if you're both committed to marriage and nobody ever mentions the D word, by which I mean divorce in the marriage, that's going to help you a lot if you have a commitment to that. So you, you want a woman that fears the Lord. Proverbs 31.10 tells us that uh, charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord uh, is to be praised. So, um, the uh, Tim, Tim Conway is a preacher who has some videos on the internet here on YouTube and other places, and he um, he posted some really good teaching on how to find a, a godly wife. Um, I think he emphasizes the idea of you shouldn't be looking for beauty at all. Beauty is deceptive. Um, well, you know, I, I, beauty can certainly be deceptive. Charm, charm is deceptive. Beauty is fleeting. Women can be beautiful in their youth and get and men too, and then <laughs> not be as beautiful when they get old physically. But um, I don't think God is against someone marrying someone they're attracted to. I mean, you have to have sexual relations with this person, and you, you want to have children, and the children are going to look kind of like the person you're married to. And, and there's some references to beauty in the Bible. I'll give you some uh, examples. Sarah was beautiful. Rebecca was beautiful. Rachel was beautiful. When Abraham uh, sent his servant to get a, a daughter for his son, the Lord blessed Isaac with a beautiful wife, physically beautiful. Now, Leah apparently wasn't all that beautiful, uh, but and she was unloved as well. But that doesn't mean she wasn't just as good a woman as, as Rachel was, or maybe better. Leah was blessed to be the mother of um, Re Reuben, Simeon. Levi and Judah, and you know Levi the priesthood, and, and Judah's the, the, the where Christ came from, and, and also David and various others. So, um, yeah, she had the, some of the prominent children in the relationship. Of course, of course, uh, Rachel had, uh, had Joseph and Benjamin as well. So, um, uh, men were allowed to marry beautiful captive slave girls. If you see a girl among the captives and she's beautiful, then there was a procedure in the Old Testament for marrying her. So. You know, God seemed to acknowledge that beauty was a, a reason to, to marry. But it's more, much more important, other than beauty, I, I think it's okay if you want someone you're attracted to. And the good news is that not everybody is attracted to the same thing. Some percentage of guys, for example, want a heavier woman. And they may not say that out loud, but that's maybe their role model when they were a child. They had, their mother was heavier or whatever, and they think of that as feminine. And they're, they're attracted to that. And... In, and that's what they want. And then some men want a thin woman, and that's what they're attracted to, and that's what they want. And, uh, you know, different faces. Um, you know, you, you may not be the best looking person in the world, but if there's one person who's right for you that is a godly person that wants to marry you of the opposite gender, of course, and they, they look at you and find you attractive, all you need is one. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to be attractive to everybody and, and, and vice versa. So, um, and some people are attracted more to personality than they are to physical appearance. And, and so it's great. You know, there's people that have an inclination to marry. There's somebody out there. You know, there's somebody out there for you. Now, 
um, the um, as far as beauty goes, First Peter chapter three talks about women pretty in themselves up. It says, "Let not your adorning be the outward adorning or the putting of of clothes and gold and silver and all that, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God." Of great price so that's in first Peter 3 4 talks about the meek and quiet spirit so you want a woman who's meek she has this humility you want someone who's beautiful in God's sight she has a humility about her she's meek and she has a quietness about her and you know that doesn't mean she doesn't say what she thinks or share her thoughts or, or things like that but you you don't want a woman to be a quarrelsome woman the um, Proverbs warn again about quarrelsome women a quarrelsome woman um, Proverbs is three times. This is something really emphasized in the book of Proverbs is this quarrelsome issue. Um, Proverbs 27, 15. A quarrelsome woman is like the dripping of a leaky roof in a rainstorm. Restraining her is like restraining the wind or grasping oil with a hand. Now, if a man has a quarrelsome wife or if his wife happens to be quarrelsome at the moment, you know, he wants to restrain her. He wants to, okay, calm down, be quiet. But if she's a quarrelsome woman, you just can't, she just won't be quiet. Um, and it's, it's uh, difficult for the man to deal with. And um, yeah, it's like restraining the wind. Proverbs 25, 4, 24. Uh, better to live on the corner of a roof than to share a house with a quarrelsome woman. Ouch. Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and ill-tempered wife. Ooh. Yeah, so um, uh, women, if, if you happen to be watching this and you just notice that your husband doesn't want to come home, you argue a lot and you notice your husband doesn't want to come home, then, um, and he stays at the office, longer than probably he should and he's not having an affair or anything or he just goes to the gym he likes to spend a lot of time out of the house away from you instead of spending time with you and you notice that you argue with him a lot maybe you're quarrelsome maybe that's the problem and, it, and uh, the office or the gym is sure a lot better than the desert or the corner of a rooftop so you you know that's something that we need to uh that women need to watch out for and guys when you're picking a wife if you've seen how she argues or if you've seen that she has an inclination to argue, maybe with her parents, maybe with her friends or with you, and you see what that's like, yeah, that's a little warning sign. You've got to be careful. And, um, yeah, you can, you can be in a dire, dire straits later on down the road, especially if you're faithful to the Lord and you don't want to divorce. Then you've got this woman who's always arguing with you all the time. You don't want to have that in your life. You want to have a woman with a meek and quiet spirit, and also a woman who's submissive. And there's something about being submissive that's contrary to the idea of being uh, quarrelsome. Um, you know, if you're submissive to someone, then you're not going to be arguing with them and fighting with them. Um, you don't do that with someone that you defer to, that someone that has authority over you. I, you know, you don't usually go to the workplace and argue with your boss. Or you shouldn't, kids shouldn't argue with their parents. Uh, some kids do, but they shouldn't do that. So. Um, that's the opposite of the submitting, you know, is, is arguing and, and being quarrelsome. It's an, an opposite thing from being submissive. Now, um, the Bible tells women in uh, Ephesians 5, Colossians 3, 1 Peter 3, that women are to submit to their husbands. And Titus 2 also tells uh, older women to teach the younger women to submit to their husbands. And you can see how a wife deals with male authority figures. Like, if you see how she interacts with her father, or maybe male pastors and other things like that. Does she, does she submit to her father? Especially if she spends a lot of time around him because she's young and lives in his house and, and that sort of thing. Um, if, if not, then you may, may face some problems in the future if you marry her. And also, um, if you're getting close to the idea of talking about marriage, then it's a good idea to talk about the, the concept of what's required of men and women in marriage and discuss whether uh, discuss the idea of wife submitting to husbands and if she has a problem with it then she may have a problem with it in the marriage if she says oh no no we just want mutual submission we don't want any of that wife submitting to husband stuff or or you you just want to control me or, or she's too afraid of it or whatever you know it may be an issue um, also I, I could talk a little bit I, I'm running out of time here could talk about whether to marry a, a, a virgin and the advantages of that um, I'd encourage that, especially if you are one. I don't think that that's necessarily required, although it's des a desirable thing. It's a blessing uh, if you can. Um, so anyway, the, um, the thing to remember, though, is if there's this perfect woman with no flaws out there, is she really going to want to marry you? You know, <laughs> at least is there something wrong with her discernment if she does? You know, a beautiful, a, a beautiful woman and of like the Proverbs type of noble woman, she's going to want a, a godly man. So try to be a godly man and realize that people have flaws, you have flaws, 
and you will have to uh, acknowledge that and love and forgive uh, whoever you do marry. No one's going to be exactly ideal, but these are some things to think about. God bless you, and feel free to refer the video to others.